Hello and welcome to OK at Home DIY. If you're new here, my name is Zaina and in this video I have five backyard or barbecue decor DIYs for you. I'm going to start out with my table runner and I'm taking a remnant of a drop cloth that has been cut down to 65 inches long and with the seam that I'm my faux seam with my hot glue here is 19 and, 19 and a half inches wide. Now I use Gorilla Glue. Um, if you like to do that to be more durable, use Stitch Witch. Marking the half point there where I can put down my middle stripe. And before I even start painting or anything, I put down some paper and then I tape down my drop cloth. Now, table runner. I'm going to put one strip of painter's tape down the middle and two strips of washi tape down each side. So that's four strips of washi tape, two on each side of that center masking or center painter's tape. And then I'm going to finish it off with two pieces of painter's tape, one on each side. This is going to set me up for my template to make the grain sack pattern on my cloth here. Just removing the washi tape that's right next to the outer painter's tape and then the center line there of the painter's tape. I am making sure each piece of tape is rubbed down well and the sides are rubbed down because that's going to stop my paint from bleeding. Taking Admiral Blue from Apple Barrel and matte black from Apple Barrel and I mix it together to get more of a black blue and I started with um, just kind of putting the paint on there and um, giving it a go and having at it but I really liked the dry brush method where you dip your paintbrush in and offload the paint and then dry brush onto the fabric. This really helps to control the amount of paint going onto the fabric. You can always add more, but you can't, you can't take it away. So it's kind of nice to just build up to the amount of paint to have on there. As well as I liked it made, you know, with the dry brushing, it made it look kind of worn or vintage or antique. And I think that's what I was going for for all my um, DIYs in this video was a more antique feel. So the cost I have into this is really zero. I'm using a scrap piece of fabric and paint that I have on hand. And then all I do is lift up my painter's tape and my washi's tape. And here it just shows you, ah, the beautifulness of this, this template. I love it. And here is the end result of the runner. This video is in participation of five under five dollar challenge hosted by Missy over the Crafty Cove and Emily over at Farm Charm Chic and their guest host is Devin over at the Freckled Mom. These ladies make fabulous DIYs, all kinds, farmhouse, shabby chic. Go check out their channels linked in the description box below as well as the playlist. On to the next craft. I'm taking this shadow box from the Dollar Tree and I'm paint staining this box with my own mixture. I'll go ahead and link that down in the description box below in case you want to see what paints I used for this faux stain. But I'm giving this shadow box a coat and then the top of it came in pieces because when I took it off and took the glass out of it, it, um, well, I needed the glass to be taken out. So I am just going to go ahead and hot glue those pieces back on. I wanted the height of those pieces because I am making a solo cup holder and I just wanted it to have just a little bit more height on that to hold those solo cups. Next I am taking a piece of belt and wrapping it around a sharpie marker to make a holder onto the side of this box. This is just going to hold that sharpie there so people can find the marker and use it to put their names on the cups in the backyard for a barbecue or a grill. I have one dollar into this project. Now to finish this project off, I am just going to give a coat of matte Mod Podge all over it. And here is how it turned out. The 
another DIY, I'm going to give this chalkboard easel a makeover. I am just taking those craft sticks and seeing where I need to cut them down. Next, I stain all the wood on here with my faux paint stain. I mixed up a large batch of it so all my stain can be the same. And I am just getting on the inside, on the outside, wherever there is stain. And after I do that, I go ahead and I'm going to mask off parts of the board because oh actually i'm also staining the craft sticks that go on there i have a this is a jumbo craft stick too that i'm staining to go on one of the the bottom ones i'm going to use to hold on the chalk next i am putting on some matte mod podge and i'm going to mod podge in a little piece of scrapbook paper cut down to size i love peekaboos and i thought this was the perfect way to kind of hide the ugly inside and just make it look a little more vintage so after that i did mask down the edges and mod podged around the rest of the chalkboard easel this is just going to seal in that faux paint and it's going to make it look more like real stain i took a craft stick and I cut it down to the size of my width of my chalkboard and that's going to be the ledge to hold the chalk and now this is a jumbo size craft stick that's stained with my faux stain that's going to be the little ledge to keep it on and I found this piece in my stash and I'm just hot gluing that back on here's a little sneak peek as the peekaboo and that little string I did paint black and here is how it turned out. I turned it into a menu board for my backyard barbecue. Fourth DIY, I took a two by six and cut it down to 16 inches long. Then I went ahead and did the same process, putting on the stripes for the gunny sack pattern and I'm going to just coat that with white chalk paint from Waverly and I did put a strip of paint, painter's tape on the ends to protect the ends from any run over paint. Taking off the paint strips now and I just love this process so I went ahead and left it in so you can see the beautiful gunny sack grain or grain print just emerge from the board here as well as this board was covered in my faux paint stain and now I am going to give this whole thing a coat of Mod Podge and there you have it the serving tray I did add a couple pieces of belt that were cut down with some screws on the ends my cost for this project was zero dollars Last DIY, I'm taking four of these boxes from Dollar Tree and staining them with antiquing wax. I didn't have very much antiquing wax left and so I wanted to save it for these boxes. Now I'm just going to hot glue all four of these boxes together making sure they are even on the bottom so when they sit down on the tabletop they are level. I am making a silverware caddy for outside. So four are going to be put together here and I have one for knives, one for forks, one for spoons, and an extra one for napkins or serving spoons or whatever you need. After that's glued together, I take another random piece of handle. I'm sure this is off of a hand bag and I'm just trimming it down so it's even on the ends and any extra pieces were cut off. This is going to be the handle of my caddy and I go ahead and just line that up with the bottom of the caddy on each side. So this finishes pretty much the build and I am using Gorilla Glue hot glue. So I wanted to embellish this a little bit so I'm taking a thicker piece of washi tape and putting it on the top. This is going to help me to get all my pieces of faux leather put on evenly. All the corners have those pieces. I added some jelly jars in at the end to hold the knives, the spoons, and the forks just for some extra height. I have four dollars into this project and here's how it turned out.
I would like to thank you so much for watching today and hanging out with me. I'd love to invite you to subscribe. I like to do farmhouse style DIYs, but I tend to throw a little bit of some other stuff in there as well. Please give this video a thumbs up as well as let me know down in the comment box which one was your favorite. And until the next time, everyone, you have a good one. Bye.